Hey everybody, I'm Greg Barron and today we're flying the RV-12. Hey everybody, today we're flying the RV-12. And as you know, we are in Phoenix, Arizona. It gets awfully hot in Phoenix, so as this RV flies a lot, we like to cool it down between flights, give us a lot longer before we have to start monitoring those temperatures. We're gonna be going through a pre-flight, we're gonna be going through a run-up, and if we're doing the run-up, we're gonna fly it. As you always know, we start with the checklist. We follow our checklist for everything. Safety is important, so we're gonna be doing this pre-flight by the book. We're gonna take a look in the cockpit. We're gonna be making sure that the ignition switches are off, the keys out of the ignition, so we don't have any starts while we're going through everything. As you can see in the cockpit of this, of this RV-12, we've got some of the top of the line avionics. We have the Garmin GX3 Touch in here, and it's a great platform. What we're doing right now is we're just checking for safety. We're making sure that the master switch is off and both of the ignitions are off. We're going to talk about these ignitions a little bit more in the run-up because it, it has to do with how you would normally check magnetos, we check dual ignitions. We also make sure the key is out of the ignition. We always have the key resting somewhere where we can see it so we know it's out so that while we're going through we know that prop's not going to start or we're at least a lot more confident it's not. One of the things we always want to do with the RV is check the canopy hardware. As you can see, we've got some hydraulic mounts here. We want to make sure they're secure and there's no play in them so we don't have any concerns about this cockpit coming off during flight. As we move into the cockpit, these wings actually can come off. And the reason for that is for transportation. This whole plane can get packed up into a trailer. And so one thing we want to do is ensure that the wings are mounted correctly. Inside the cockpit, you'll see in a moment, there's what's called a wing spar. And we're checking to make sure the, the rod is exposed so that we know that it's locked in place. Checking the other side of the canopy hardware, moving on inside. I'm going to check the wing spar here and make sure it's in place. And we're also going to check the ELT. The ELT is the uh, emergency locating transmitter. It's this orange box here, and we're making sure that no wires are damaged. Everything looks good. Um, fun fact is I'm part of the Civil Air Patrol. If you don't know anything about them, the Civil Air Patrol actually goes out and looks for these ELTs when they go off. So I know just about how important it is for that ELT to be working in case of an emergency. What we're doing now is we're looking at making sure all the rivets on the plane are in place, all the bolt screws, everything's in place, nothing's damaged. I like to physically, physically touch all the skin of the plane, make sure I'm not feeling any bumps, cracks, anything that concerns me. I'm looking over the top of the wing, making sure the airfoils are intact and making sure all the rivets are in place again. We're going to work our way back. I like to touch the, the, the wing here, make sure there's no damage again. We check the light, this landing light, LED landing light, make sure that it's not broken. Come around, we'll check the nav lights and the strobes. They're also intact. Here, we're, because these wings are removable, they have handholds here, and the, the POH actually asks us to give them a yank to make sure they don't come off. So we just give it a pull. It's solid. We don't have, enough, we don't have anything to worry about. Now that we're here, this is a great opportunity to take a look under the wing. We like to make sure that the skin under the wing is also intact, the ringlet's in place, and again, all the rivets are in place. I don't see any damage and everything looks good to go. We actually have flapperons on this, on this plane instead of ailerons, so these are the flaps and the ailerons. So we examine them, we make sure they have a full range of motion. Underneath, we're going to check the three connection points. There's a connection point here and we look to make sure there's enough thread on the bolt and to make sure it's secure, it's not loose at all. There's a second connection point here. We look for the same thing. And a third connection point on the end. And there's a few more things to look for here. We first make sure that everything is attached and everything is intact, nothing's loose. We're gonna examine the whole underside of the wing again from here, making sure everything is intact. And then on top up here, you're gonna notice there's some nylon weights here. We wanna make sure these nylon weights are intact and in place for balance. Here we have a great opportunity to take a look at the wheel and the landing gear. We're making sure the tire is inflated properly and that it's got some tread left. It does, the tire looks great. We're also looking at the brake system. There's no leaks on the ground, no leaking fluid, which is good. We're gonna take a look at the nuts. We have some orange paint on the nuts on the inside. As long as that orange paint is lined up and not broken, we know they're good to go. Now we're just inspecting the brake pads. We're making sure we have enough left on those brake pads to stop us when we come in for a landing. As you can see, we've got a great amount of brake left. This is also a great opportunity to take a look at the belly of the plane. There's a couple antennas under the plane that we always inspect to make sure that they're secure, as well as a fuel vent. We want to make sure everything is clear and secured to the plane. So again, here we're checking all the rivets and the skin of the plane to make sure it's all intact. Now, something that's really easy to miss is right here. It looks exactly like a rivet, but this is actually our static port. So we want to take special care to make sure that this is clear. 
We're gonna work our way down again, just touching the skin, making sure everything is intact. There's no dings, bends, dents, or scratches. We're gonna take a look at some of the tail here and the rudder, make sure it's intact. Now we're checking the stabilator. This is the stabilator here. We're gonna check for full range of motion. It goes up all the way and it comes down all the way. While we're here again, we're checking all the rivets. We're also gonna check the tail cone hardware, make sure everything is placed, everything's tight. We make sure all the bolts are in place. Something you won't be able to see on camera is you can see quite a few boat bolts in here through the tail cone. Anytime we have an opportunity to see anything inside the airplane, I take extra care just to make sure everything is fastened securely so we have nothing coming off during flight. We can move this, um, we can move this all the way up. And this is a great opportunity to take a look again at the belly of the plane, just making sure that nothing's been damaged, scratched, cracked, or dented in any way. Everything underneath looks real good. We're also going to take a chance to take a look at the rudder. We have a great big rudder. We're going to make sure it has full range of motion to the left and to the right. And everything is intact. All the rivets are in place and good to go. Here's another great opportunity to look in any, any crack in, or any hole, I should say, that we have on the plane to examine any hardware we can. Here's a nut and a bolt in the rudder that's really hard to see. But if we take time to make sure it's secure and we got plenty of thread left, it's another way to secure, make sure our flight's going to be safe today. We're just continuing down the plane and around it, making sure all the screw screws and rivets are in place. We're making sure everything is intact. As we come down the plane, you're going to see we have another sneaky static port on this side. Again, we want to make sure it's clear. It looks just like a rivet, so we're making sure it's good to go. Now we're on the left side of the plane and we're checking the same things. Checking the flapper on again. We're making sure we have our nylon weights and all our connection points are intact. We have one here and we have three down there, but before we keep going, we're going to check the left main tire here. Tires inflated properly and we have plenty of tread. And I can already tell you we've got great, uh, great, great brake pads on this side. I also don't see any fluid on the ground. All the bolts are in place, so we're good to go. I've been checking the connection points as I walk along here and also checking to make sure we have full range of motions on the flapper on. Again, we're checking the skin of the plane. We're going to check the nav and strobe lights on this side. We'll give this wing a pull, make sure it doesn't fall off. We'll check the underside of this wing, making sure everything is intact and good to go, which it is. And then we'll check the leading edge of the wing, making sure there's nothing wrong with it. Everything looks good. Get a few bugs on our hands. Now when we get here, we get to the stall vane. We want to make sure this is loose and has full range of motion as well. This is what's going to alert us in the event of a stall or as we get close to a stall, we want to make sure that's working. Now we're examining the nose of the aircraft. Again, we're just making sure all the screws are in place. I think it's even more important to make sure everything's in place on the nose though, because it's taking a lot of the the wind is taking a lot of the force. So I spend a lot of time up here. While I'm coming around, I inspect the blades of the propeller. We're gonna make sure that there's no cracks, dings, or dents in the propeller. We will check both sides. Everything looks good on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it through and we'll check the other side. And the propeller looks real good. I'm gonna bring the propeller down because it'll give us a better view of some of these inlets we have on the front. Just got some air intake inlets in the, in the filter and we wanna make sure everything is clear. There's no debris, bird's nest, bugs in there. Make sure everything looks good. We're checking to make sure all the screws on the, on the nose cone of the plane are secure, which they are. Now something cool about this plane, I think it's cool is we've got the pitot tube right here on the tip of the plane. We wanna make sure this is clear so that way we have all our information coming in correctly and all the instruments in the plane are right. Right here we have an opportunity just to examine the nose wheel, making sure again it's inflated properly and that the tread is, is good to go. Everything looks good. We also check the bolts, again making sure that orange paint is in line and not broken. Everything looks straight so we know that it's going to be secure and good to fly. Here we're just going to take a quick look at the exhaust. This plane flies a lot so it's not anything we really have to worry about with with birds building nests and holes or anything because of how often it flies, but we're not taking any shortcuts here. I know it's cold, so I'm gonna stick my finger up there and make sure there's nothing there. And I crawled in there earlier and I took a look straight up and it was clear. We just wanna, I like to listen to the sound, make sure there's no cracks or strange sounds, make sure it's tacked, intact and good to go. And that also gives us a great, I'll take a look in the engine compartment. We have a Rotax 912 on this Vans RV12. Something that's really interesting that our uh, Rotax does is that their cylinder heads are liquid cooled. We know from class that most aircraft, general aviation aircraft, are air cooled. And while it does use air cooling, it does have a coolant bottle for those cylinder heads. You'll see, be able to see as we look in here that there's a coolant bottle 
in the back left and we always want to make sure it's full and ready to go. Now while we're here we've got a great opportunity to expect as much as we can in the engine. We can see the throttle cable here and we want to make sure that's intact and secure. We see the oil which we're going to check in a moment. We've got fuel lines, we've got, we've got the battery in the back there and we can make sure everything is secured, everything is good to go for flight. You can also see our air filter, the intake filter and make sure it's clear debris. Rotax is a lot different than your typical Lycoming or Continental engine. It's actually really modernizing aviation and how engines are built. One of the neat features on this Rotax 912 is that it uses a clutch. So in the event of a prop strike, it's protecting the engine. Now this is a horizontally opposed engine, a lot like your others, but it's a lot smaller and more compact. And the way they, one of the major ways they do that is they use press fit crankshaft. This RV actually just got a brand new Rotax engine in it after the old one if we decided to get rid of the old one after about 1600 hours. Something different about these Rotax engines are the cylinders are actually made out of aluminum instead of iron like most engines. If you can, it may be hard to see, but you can see in this engine the cylinder is actually starting to come away, the coating's coming off. This, this cylinder was just getting, getting old, so we decided to get a brand new engine for this new RV. We've talked about oil systems in class. This plane actually has a dry sump oil system. So when we're checking the oil, because the oil can siphon back into the engine, we need to pull it through several times. So that's what I'm gonna be doing now, is pulling through the prop until we hear that oil popping, coming up, gurgling into the, into the tank so that we can check it and make sure we have enough. I don't know if you were able to hear that or not, but we heard the oil coming through, so now we're gonna be able to check the oil. a little low, I'm going to add some. This Rotac engine actually takes a special kind of oil. It's a motorcycle oil and it's going to be the Aeroshell Sport Plus 4. And this actually uses an SAW 10W40. We are going to add a little bit to the engine today. Now because this engine requires such little oil, we fill it very slowly and just a little bit at a time before we check it again. We added about 100 milliliters. So we're going to go ahead and check it. And now we can see that it's right where it needs to be. You can take a look, the oil's hard to see because it's new, but the oil is right above where it needs to be within that window, so we're good to go. Last thing we have to do here is we're cleaning up any oil that might have spilled, making sure the oil cap is on tight, everything is secured. We'll go ahead and cl close this compartment, making sure it's secure. We know it's not coming up. Go ahead and put this oil away, and we'll be ready to go. Now something we do on every flight is make sure we have our appropriate documentation. So we're checking that now. We have our weight and balance our POH, or our operating handbook. We have our airworthiness and our registration. You're gonna notice that this airworthiness certificate is pink. That's because we're flying a light sport today. What we're doing right now is we're gonna do a weight and balance check on the aircraft before we go. So we just turned the, turned the GX3 on and we're gonna go ahead and check our weight and balance. If you've ever done weight and balance on paper before, I'm about to make you really jealous. All we do is hit weight and balance. We haven't put our weight, so we're gonna be carrying 13 gallons of fuel today. We're gonna put in my weight my pilot, my co-pilot's weight, and our baggage. We make sure that we're within the envelope, that dot's green, we're good to go. Now if it was red, we'll change this to 15 just to show you. We would know we would need to make some changes to make our weight and balance work. But we're specifically putting in 13 gallons of fuel today, so we're good to go. The POH tells us that we have to have at least four to fly. We have 13, we're in the green, let's go flying. We're gonna go ahead and fuel up the plane. We're gonna put 13 gallons in it. Right now there's about five, so we need to add almost 10. While I'm fueling up the plane, I want you to know something. We use auto gas, and that might surprise you, but we've talked about this in class. We've talked about how most general aviation aircraft will use 100 low lead or av gas. We use auto ga gas, and that's actually approved and recommended by Rotax. If we use AV gas or we use 100 low lead, we would have to change the oil at 25, every 25 hours because of the contaminants in it. But with auto gas, we're able to change it every 100 hours. We wanted to make sure we explained the run-up well. Because of the gearbox on this airplane allows for our engine to spin so much faster than your typical Cessna or Piper, we're going to check our ignitions. Now, when I, when I say it goes so much faster, instead of running our engine up to 1500 RPM or whatever it may be in a Cessna, we're running this up to 4000 RPM. When we get it up to 4000 RPM, we're not checking our magnetos, we're checking our ignition systems. We have two ignition systems, which is a little different on the Rotax than it would be in a, in a Continental um, or a Lycoming. So we turn off A, we check for a drop. We turn off B, we check for the drop. 
make sure they're both within a hundred within a 300 total and less than 125 rpm drop difference between the two as long as we're within that range we're good to go all right so for the run up we're just going to do we're going to follow the checklist make it nice and easy so first thing is control is free and correct so left goes up right goes down left goes up right goes down elevator goes front and back up and down i should say and then rudder goes left and right so we know our flight controls are free and correct trim we're going to set for takeoff on on the um, instruments here, that's just a little bit below the green line. Engine instruments, we watch everything is currently in the green. We will watch those temperatures to make sure they stay so. Our fuel valve is open, we check that. Our flaps are zero. Fuses, if something was blown, it would light up so we would know. And we have spare fuses here, but we keep an eye on those. Choke is off and secure. Our ignition, we run up to 4,000, and then we check both of our ignitions, A and B. Again, mag it's a little different than magnetic check. We're checking our dual ignition, so running it up to 4,000 RPMs here. And then we'll check A, and we've got about 90, 80 drop, 80, 90 drop on A, and check B. We got about a 70 drop, and they both recovered perfectly. Go ahead and check idle. And the aircraft is still running nice and smooth, so that is all good to go. Now our, our checklist here says the drop could be less than 300, 100, less than 125 difference between the two. And, uh, we know that was set. So we got our transponder set to 1200 or VFR, and it is transponding. Our choke is off. We already checked. Canopy is locked and secure, and then we went through our safety check earlier with Glenn, but we'll do it again real quick. So um, first of all, your seatbelt's fastened. We went through the seatbelts, how to use them. It's a five-point harness. A is, uh, so air, we have air, air vents on the side. We can keep those open or closed. We also have heat, so when it gets real nice and cold here in Phoenix, we can turn on the cabin heat. We just have to be careful of the carbon monoxide, uh, make sure that we aren't feeling lightheaded or any kind of any of those symptoms. I do want to get a carbon monoxide detector in this aircraft. That would sure make it nice just to keep an eye on things, but that's something to definitely to look into down the future. Um, and then fire extinguisher is right between our legs. So in the event of a fire, we can reach for that, blow it on out. If there is an emergency, we've talked about going, getting off the back of the aircraft. We will do that to avoid the propeller and meet at the tail. And then if we need to get out of here, we can um, turn the latch right behind me and above me to open the canopy. If it's stuck or won't open, you can kick out the canopy glass and we can uh, always jump out that way. All right, let's go fly. Go ahead, and go ahead and do it. calm, temperature three two dew point four. Altimeter one. Visual approach. Runway one nine is in use. Okay. Advisory. Luke Special Air Traffic Rule is active. Hazardous weather information for Arizona is available on high walls and flight service frequencies. Advise on initial contact, you have information, Kilo. Go to the airport information, Lima current altimeter 2969, wind 190 at 8, gust 16. Long way 190 in use, Luke Special Air Traffic Rule active, hazardous weather in effect. Alright, I'm make a call to say no. RV-412 Foxtrot Charlie going to the title portal left, midfield down one, one nine. Left, midfield down one for one nine, four one two Foxtrot Charlie. RV-2 Foxtrot Charlie going with one nine, clear to land. Hello, one nine, clear to land, four one two Foxtrot Charlie. I'm Greg, thanks for flying with me today. Safe travels and blue skies. So I'm not in Texas, as you know. I've talked about Phoenix a lot. I've had to do my flight training here in, in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm actually at the Glendale Airport. That's call sign KGEU. And my flight school of choice is Flying Cacti. They've been great for me. Their website is flying-cacti.com and I definitely recommend you check them out if you're anywhere in the Southwest. They've got great rates, great instructors, and awesome planes.